Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to the Sure IDC podcast, the show about anything and everything. This is Lucas, and let's see what topic we can get into today. We talk about movies, songs, video games, board games, food, books, personality traits, animals, history, anything and everything you can think of. So sit back, relax, because we're just here to have a good time. Have you ever been in your car listening to the radio or maybe listening to your playlist and all of a sudden you notice that a song is just going on and on and on and on and I would keep going if it wasn't annoying but I mean the song is still going and it feels like it has been 10 hours of your life and you finally just look at your phone and you realize that it's only still been 10 minutes left of the song so you decide to just skip it? Well... Today, we are diving deep into the topic of really long songs. Those songs that just go on forever. Are those songs annoying? Or are they musical masterpieces? To join me in this conversation is someone that we haven't heard from in a while. And that is Jed. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I am happy to be back on here. I think it. I think it has been a while. If I had to throw out a guess, maybe since Christmas time. Yes, yes. Welcome back. It has definitely been since Christmas time. Talking about Christmas. What was it? Christmas music. I think is what it was. It, you know, there was that. There's been Christmas movies. There's been. I, you know, I want almost want to say it was Christmas decorations. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe Christmas music was the year before last think so you know i love christmas that's what we're talking about today right yes yes we're talking about really long christmas songs <laughs> you know i don't know of too many of those but uh hmm. christmas songs or rather really long songs those i do have opinions on i know i hope, you... I hope that's a good thing that that is a good that, that is a good thing that you're on this episode about um really long songs <laughs> you know i really should just I do am... that I really should just do that one time, have a topic, and then have someone, you know, not be interested in it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, next time you bring me on, lie to me about what the topic is, and then hit me with the real one, and Ooh. We'll, we'll see what it is. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I, I like that idea, actually. That's going to be, that might be a season four thing. Um, like now, you that. know, now that I'm thinking about it, are there any long Christmas songs? Like, I don't... I'm trying to rack my brain and think if there are any, like, truly long... Which I don't think. I don't think they are any really long songs. Maybe some of the, uh... I was about to say church songs. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, there's nothing off the top of my head. I mean, you, you could probably throw out one of those that's... You know, essentially a Christmas hymn that mm-hmm. actually has like 16 verses, but we usually oh. only sing three. Yes. Um, there's there's nothing like, you know, going to the Christmas Eve service at your church and realizing that a song that you know very well has six other verses that you know nothing about. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you're like, wait, whoa, whoa, we're singing the whole thing? It's going to take 10 minutes just to sing this song. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah, I mean that that is that that right there, is true. Like some of those Christmas hymns, "Away in a Manger," "Hark the Herald Angels Sing," all them, they definitely have sometimes five or six. Uh, uh, what, why am I why am I blinking on the word? Um, verses. Verses, yes, and <laughs> uh, and yeah, you're just like okay, we get it. <laughs> You're like, I want to go home my present now. Anyway, this is not supposed to be a Christmas episode, Jed. Shame on you. I'm sorry. I had to find a way. So, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta talk about Christmas. Hey, Christmas in July. Well, you better believe I've been celebrating. Oh my gosh, of course. Of Mostly course. in that at some point I am supposed to actually take the, the lights off a tree that I said I was going to do in January. Um, and it's still been sitting there waiting for me to do that, so... Whoa, 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 whoa! Hang it's on. not upstairs. It's it's down in the basement. I just need to. They're dead lights. They're lights that need to be taken off so you can put actually working lights on it. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm gonna do this early so I don't have to do this in November. 
still oh, I mean, haven't done it yet. So I was just about to say, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Do you still have your Christmas tree up? <laughs> it's just, you know, decorated with fishing stuff and no, no, not really. I don't have it up. I promise. <laughs> so really long songs, you know, what is your what's your basic opinion of really long songs? So I know this is going to come as a cop out, but it for me it is one that's like it depends on the song, um, and how well they make it seem low. If if they can, because there are songs that are like three minutes long, the artist has found a way to make them feel like they're thirty minutes long, mm. and vice versa. There are some long songs that they just flow together really well, have a natural flow that they seem to run shorter than they actually are. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. Most of them are not that way. <laughs> the majority of them. Would you say, like, 60% of them are not that way? Or is that still too low? Would you go, would you go as high as 80, 90? Yeah, I think I'd probably go as high as 80, 90. Wow, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's... there's I mean, I, you're 100% right. Uh, it depends on the song. Um... You're right with the whole, um, sometimes there's going to be a three minute long song and you're thinking it's forever. And sometimes you have a really long song and you're like, oh man, that was so short. Let's listen to it again. And you're like, oh man, it was actually six minutes long. Um, but, uh, an example of that is, um, carry on my wayward son. When I was looking up, uh, songs that were long, I was like, what's that song that's like. Oh, carry on, and I was looking up to see how long it was. It's like, I think it's only like three minutes or something yeah. like that. But it seems longer than that, doesn't it? It does. And I think, so even for me, it's almost like two specific genres always feel this way. Rap music and jazz music. Why those two? I couldn't tell you. But those two for me always seem like they feel twice as long as they actually are. Really? Um, and sometimes that's in a good way. I, I will admit jazz is usually in a bad way. Um, I always think of uh, my sister-in-law. When she was in college, she used to that Christmas time, bringing it back in, uh, Christmas time used to have like, you know, this Christmas uh, musical event thing where the choir would get together, the band would get together. And then there was always a section for the jazz band. Mind you, they maybe only played for like eight minutes, but I swear it felt like we were sitting there waiting an hour um, or so, and you know, because they're giving everyone, they're like, here, here's the bass guitar solo, and you just, it's like, would they ever let the bass guitar have a solo? It doesn't sound good. I, I'm sorry, you're talented, but it doesn't sound good by itself. And so, for me, jazz music is one of those that just feels, I, and you know, even that's when I'm like, it doesn't even feel twice as long. It feels three times longer than it actually is to me. Wow, that's interesting because I mean, jazz is. I mean, I guess I get it because jazz is slower, kind of, you know. I think it's made to be a little bit longer so that you can improvise a little bit. Because um, jazz is mainly, you know, based on improvising and stuff. I guess it's a form of jazz. Um, mm -hmm. But rap, interesting, because, you know, I mean, I don't listen to a lot of rap <laughs> at all. But, uh, but it's interesting that that would consider that that would seem longer because they're talking faster. It is. And I think maybe it's because I'm like, wow, they've already said so much that it feels like it should have been a long song. <laughs> yeah. And then I look at it and I'm like, oh, wow, they, it's only been a minute and a half. Or already yeah. through four verses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that makes but sense. But yeah, so it is interesting because they, they almost have like opposite dynamics. Rap is a lot of times very, very fast paced where jazz is very slow. And it's not me trying to say anything bad against either of them. No. I'm like, and the people who do them phenomenally, phenomenally talented, way more talented than me because I have zero musical talent. But, um, for me, yeah, those are just ones that, and again, I'm not even necessarily saying it a bad way. Sometimes I, I do like both of them if i can control it like the, the the jazz section in those you know musical events if i have to sit there and i'm like great this is i i want to be leaving now i may not like that one as much but you know if i can put on some nice smooth jazz while i'm working to have in the background hmm, that's good 
Yeah. Well, it's also interesting because the majority of songs that are are classified as really long songs are neither jazz nor rap. <laughs> it's, I mean, classic rock. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to shame anybody right now by getting these wrong. But like, would you pop classic rock like that type of thing? I guess De- definitely like. Yeah, classic rock stuff. Like I said, a lot of it really comes from like the sixties to nineties. I would say is is what people are really considering because I'm sure you're throwing out kind of like classic music in this one where those are meant to be all yes. the songs. Yeah, so I mean, classic music is is completely different. I guess. Um, I mean, they don't really. Nec- I mean, I guess it's the same thing as an opera. I mean, operas mm-hmm. are known to be very very long. And they're operatic and singing the whole time, but uh, but yeah, classical music is is made to be long, but I guess more so it's songs that are made. I guess maybe hmm, maybe like pop well, I get culture. What you're saying. Like yeah, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah, or like if you were to, if you were to put a CD in, and you're looking at the fact to see how long each of these in. Most of the time, you're gonna see like. Three minutes, four minutes, three fifty, and then there's the one that's like nine minutes, and you're like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" <laughs> like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't sign up for this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's like the pop culture, pop music, not pop music, but like the popular music. Because um, mm-hmm. I mean, classical music is popular to someone, but not to the general public. I would have a feeling. But, um. What? I mean, the average length of a song is about three and a half minutes. That's kind of, that's supposedly what Google, what Google says, the average length of a song. But what you know, what is classified as a really long song? Is it five minutes? Is it seven minutes? Is it ten minutes? Fifteen or twelve to fifteen minutes? What what is what is classified as a really long song? I think for me, once you start getting to five minutes, or maybe you say at least like five and a half minutes, that's where I'm like, okay, this song is definitely starting to get really long. Um, but I think when I get to the point of, is this song being too long a disservice to it? Is it is it taking away from it? That's usually once you're more hitting like that seven minute, eight minute mark, hmm. my opinion. Yeah. So what about so what about those songs that hit the fifteen, like twelve to fifteen? Are are you like I'm skipping this now, or are you like? I mean, of course, it depends on the song, but yeah, for me, I, it kind of depends on the song. And I'll use one for example. I don't know that this gets up to twelve or fifteen, but uh, it's everything I do by Brian Adams. Mm. on that and it's it's a song i personally love in terms of when he's actually like you know doing the singing the verses the chorus and stuff like that beautiful song in my opinion love it then it extends like after you assume the song is finishing up for like another three or four minutes of this instrumental part and him doing these non vocals with no words you know just the uh, and ahs and stuff and and to me, it's at that point that, yeah, a lot of times I get to that. I'm like, okay, I've heard the part that I wanted to hear. And now I'm hitting skip and going to the next song because I really care about this extra three, four minutes that you tagged on here. You don't, you did it for a reason. I respect that. Still going to skip it. Hmm. That's interesting. I just looked it up. Is it everything I do? Um, do it for you. Do it for you. Like, Everything I do, that one. Yep, that one. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's only six minutes long. <laughs> well, and so I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, honestly, it may not even be that long. So, okay, so maybe not three or four minutes, but it probably is. Like the song should be done after like four minutes, and then it still goes on to this other portion, the last two minutes of it. That again, it's just like you could have started, and I could be halfway another song by this point if you just finished it. <laughs> When it had a natural ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, I definitely don't have that song on the list of songs. But, yeah, definitely that song is a longer one. But <laughs> at the same time, it's not. 
So but it just no, feels I mean, long. It, even yeah, like you said, even in the category I put it in, it technically didn't fall into that seven eight minute range where I was like, "Hey, this is too long." So well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe my definition is actually six minutes then. <laughs> <laughs> if it hits six minutes, it's too long. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've uh, after a while, you know, I just, I just kind of get tired of it. I mean, there's not a lot of. So- I mean, I don't know. There's I don't listen to a, a lot of really long songs. I guess um, mm-hmm. I would say that the longest song that I listen to on a daily basis, and by daily I mean not daily, but like you know, uh, you know, a common, you know, maybe once a week or once a month or whatever is like Bohemian Rhapsody or something like that. Uh, mm. Which I think that song is only like, I think that song's like five minutes long. So I don't really dig deep and look for the really long songs, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would definitely say if it hits that, if there's a moment in time where I am hearing the hearing the song, and I say to myself, either out loud or in my head, uh, "Gosh, this song is still playing." Then it's too long. <laughs> no, I'd agree with that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I say it, and then the song ends right then. I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, that was that was kind of ironic," but uh, but. Yeah, sometimes it's just like, wow, is this song still playing? Jeez Louise. It's crazy. Mm. So whether that be the, I'm guessing that's probably around the five to six. I would say we're pretty even with that. The five to six minute mark, which is like, okay, this the song's over. But, I mean, of course, we've already kind of answered this question. But, like, you know, I guess let's try to think outside the box. Think of someone else's perspective. You know, is there such a thing as a really, as a song being too long? I mean, there's a reason why the artist did it. There's a reason why it's it's like that. And yeah, I mean, is it is it really long, or are we just or or uh, la, 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 or our attention spans just shortening? Well, I do think our attention spans are definitely shortening. I think there is probably some scientific backing for that one. I Even that one, I'm like, I don't know that you can say that's the argument to this one. Solely because of the idea of like, you know, nine minutes wasn't the average when these songs were made. It was still, at worst, you're talking about four minutes to three and a half minutes. So these were still long songs for their time. They're still long songs now. So you'd assume they're probably... Yeah at least still be a similar opinion, you know, when some of these songs were first, uh, you know, introduced at that point. So, yeah. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of rabbit holing a little bit. Uh, I mean, speaking of uh, attention spans and stuff, it's kind of amazing how uh, we do have a smaller attention span now, but yet your the average movie uh, that comes out nowadays is usually about two hours, maybe even two and a half hours. But back yeah, in no, the day, I mean, it was like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Or yeah, even if I see a movie now that is only like an hour, hour and a half long, I'm like, that's short. Yeah. It's like, like how do they get away with this? That's short. <laughs> it's like, oh, I could watch that in an afternoon. <laughs> and still have time for other stuff. Um, Another rabbit hole. Have you seen the new Indiana Jones yet? Yeah, I was actually just going to say that oh. was one that I went and saw um, just this past weekend. I, that one's a two and a half hour movie. And to me, it was funny because that one, despite it being two and a half hours, it actually felt short to me. Really? Short, short. Or being a longer movie, it did not feel long to me. That's hmm. a better way to put it. I uh, I haven't seen it yet, so no spoilers. Um but uh, but that's funny. That's funny that you just said that because the majority of reviews that I've seen or like comments and stuff are saying that the movie's too long. And I could see that. I think that you know, again, it's just another point to show, like, hey, difference in opinion. Yeah. Um, for me, you know, for that, 
even one that I'll throw out of another, you know, big, massive movie. Um, and I think it was probably around the same amount of time, give or take, but the Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So this one's, you know, at least a, a while back. We're not doing spoiler alerts. That one felt long to me. It was still a very good movie. One of the best MCU movies, in my opinion. Yeah. Felt long. And I think that one was also about two and a half hours. Really? Hmm. Hmm? That's interesting. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess there's just a, I mean, and this goes back to even music too. There's a certain pacing of the, sh- of the show or the movie or the music of the song. There's a pacing that either people kind of feel itself kind of going, you know, and they were like, oh, that's not that long at all. And then, you know, maybe some people aren't feeling the pace of the project, um, the same way and so they're feeling it oh yeah they could have knocked off the last 30 minutes and it would have been fine um so that mm. it is interesting that people have different perspectives of whether something is long or not entertainment wise yeah so no it is and but even to throw it back to a song because i think here's actually one that me and you will disagree on enjoy and even though it is a longer song I don't feel like American Pie is a bad song for being how long it is. Oh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I'm shutting this down right now. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but that was, you know, that was one of the first ones I think that came to both of our minds. When you think about, you know, a song that is, seems to be really long and it, it really is longer than it needs to be. I, I will say that I enjoy it. I, I think it has a good flow throughout it. Um, hmm. And everything, I like how it kind of slows down towards the end, um, and even goes to the I, I don't know musical terms. I'll say the opposite of a crescendo, decrescendo. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but so to me, I enjoy that song. Now it's gonna. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna listen to it every single time it comes on. Um, and and you know I I can hear it enough. I have it on my oldies playlist on my mm-hmm. on my i iPhone, but. Um, it's one that I do enjoy. And so a lot of times when it comes on, I do listen to it and I do listen to it through its entirety. So, yeah, I, like I said, I know beforehand, we already talked about how you said you do not like that song. That one's an immediate, like skip as soon as it comes on. Oh, a hundred percent. Like, and I, I don't know if it's the song. Okay. Okay. I have to, I have to be real right now. Cause this is the podcast of, of realty. Um, <laughs> not reality, realty. <laughs> Um, uh yeah 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 um and uh i mean i don't know if it's the song or if it's the radio that ruined the song for me because you know it's one of those things radio and this is just you know this is another rabbit hole because radio is just there's so many songs in this world so many songs like millions and billions and trillions of songs you know maybe that's a little over exaggeration but why are you playing the same songs over and over and over again? Like I, I get the whole no repeats nine to five. I mean, I get it. Like play, play the popular songs, you know, more nowadays or whatever. I mean, you being in radio, you might, you know, know the answer to this, but why, why play the same songs over and over and over again? It really is just entirely based on popularity. And I think, you know, that especially, longer time ago well there's still ways to measure it now beforehand it was how many songs how songs sold you know if a song went gold it was a pretty good song if a song went platinum or double platinum it was a popular song and so if you knew that it was a popular song you were going to play it more often mm. you had those songs especially on the oldie stations where a song like that is going to be played you know it's not going to be played on your 40 station anymore um yeah that's where you're going to hear it often um, but they have other ways of charting it, you know, still doing that. And some of that will be based on sales. Um, but even using things like, uh, Apple music and Spotify. Now you can take a look to see how popular a song is. Um, and that's, you know, that's the big reason why is because if a song is popular, they're going to play it. Especially with radio is you're not guaranteed that somebody who is listening at 12 PM was a person who was li- listening at 11 a.m. just an hour earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still disagree with the idea of playing the same song within an hour of each other. If a, if a place does it, it's that 
it's for that reason. You're not guaranteed that your listener was already the same person listening when you last played it. So that is one of the biggest reasons why you will hear it over again. Um, yeah. You know, some insider trading there. But. Yeah. I mean, I just find it really, honestly, like, that's one of my biggest pet peeves about the, about radio, not theater, radio, <laughs> um, <laughs> is because, is because I get in the car to drive to work and I hear a song. I get in the car, drive home at five, guess what I hear? The same song that I heard at, when I drove to work. And it's like, I really wish you would have stayed with, stayed with theater. It's like, you know what? I listen to Phantom of Opera, and there it is again. <laughs> there American it is again. Phantom of the Opera. I go ahead, and this time I watch Hamilton. What do you know? American Pie? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, I don't mind that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, American Pie, you know, whenever that song comes on, you're like, you are literally holding me hostage <laughs> for the next... It feels like 10 minutes of my life. Like, mm. I'm going to have to change the channel. I'm going to have to switch the radio station because I do not want to listen to American Pie for eight minutes. It's like, that's half my drive. And for, you know, for the most part, they, at least maybe more with modern songs, they've kind of adjusted it where on, you know, on the CD, on Spotify, on, you know, these streaming services mm -hmm. and listen to the full version. If you're going to listen to it on radio, they usually have the radio edit that if it's an eight minute long song that cuts it down to four minutes, you know, yeah. depending on if you're able to. But there's some of those that are like, you can't really cut out this part. It's kind of integral to the song. And so, yeah, yeah so sometimes you run into that. But I think more today you do run into a lot more radio edits of song. Yeah, I'm not sure you would find that as much with some of the older songs. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is that, I mean, radio's, I don't know, radio's just kind of different altogether because obviously they're playing the songs that are in their wheelhouse or in their repertoire or whatever. But, I mean, I, I truly believe that, that, that the reason I don't like that song is primarily because of the radio. And uh, yeah. just because it really just feels like, and then of course you're stuck listening to it. I mean, I, I don't know, like, I guess we're going down rabbit holes this episode because I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not a uh, radio channel changer. Mm. Like, uh, no, Ar I'm not either. Ariel, my girlfriend, she is, she's, she's like Jonathan, of course. You know Jonathan Kirkland, person on the comes on the show a lot. Um, they don't like, <clears throat> and I quote, talk radio. And I'm not ta I'm not talking about actually talk radio. I'm talking about when people talk on the radio. <laughs> and so they hate it. And so when they get to a, a a radio station and it's playing music, they listen to it. And then they start talking. Guess what the first thing they do? They change their radio station. And mm -hmm. so sometimes you could be listening to ten radio stations in the in the span of five, seven minutes. I'm like, I'll just let them talk and then they'll play more music. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. I, I, I feel like we need to tell them about an easier solution to that. <laughs> um, and that's this thing called your phone. You know. <laughs> Well, because that's... that's me. Like I, I don't listen to the radio in my car. Like mm -hmm. no, no offense to radio station, because again, I also majored in radio. Um, I don't do it. And I can handle it if somebody comes in and starts talking. The, the occasional times I do, I'm like, that's fine. Um, it's mostly when they have like their their fundraisers. That's when I'm usually changing the channel if I'm listening to the radio. For the most part, I mean, most cars. I mean, granted, if you're driving an older car, then I can understand this problem. Most cars have like Bluetooth now to the point where I'm like of the car my phone automatically connects to the bluetooth and starts playing the song that ever was last going and so i'm only ever listening to the music that's only on my phone whether that's music spotify or something else yeah um so maybe jonathan and your girlfriend ariel don't know about that yet but i <laughs> would be happy to introduce them to that they, they do they do know about that and and, <laughs> and their cars they're that's all they're listening to um they could. But when they're in my car and I'm driving, guess what I'm listening to? <laughs> the radio. But see, I couldn't handle that, though, because my personal thing, I like to listen to song from a song from the beginning, if possible. 
Mm. If you're like, if they're going through and they're like, oh, somebody's talking, switching, and now it's thirds of the way through another song, I'm I'm more annoyed about the fact that I'm like, well, now I'm listening to a song that I don't even get to enjoy all the way because I can't just stop and be patient. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely fascinating. It's like it's like those people that uh, play a song and go, oh, this is a good one. And then they play a song, and then halfway through, they're done with the song, so they change to a different one. Yeah. And it's like, why, I mean, why are you doing that? Just let the song play out. <laughs> and I knew some people like that. Now, occasionally there's times that I'll play a song for like somebody, and it feels like they're not vibing with it, and mm-hmm. so then I get embarrassed, so I'm like, okay, let me just change it now, or just turn it off. <laughs> Let's just slow... <laughs> Let's just slowly turn the volume down and slow <laughs> and fade out. Oh, wasn't and that nice? Then start Charlie Brown walking out of the room. Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, back back to American Pie and everything. You know, this it is it is a long song, and I understand that it's popular, and I understand that it's. You know, we're going to talk about a little later when we talk about a certain topic, you know, discussion. But, uh, but that is, that is a song that I definitely probably know all the words to. I mean, I could, I could sing it if I needed to, but after, after the first or second time he sings American Pie, I'm just like, okay, I'm done. It's like, that's about the three minute mark. So, but... But yeah, I don't know. There's just something about it. Something about it just just irks me. Irks me. But uh, but what are some other examples of really long songs? We're, since we're talking about American Pie and everything, um, got you got some examples. So I I've got a few. There was one that I thought was long, and I think it's gotten a reputation for being long, but it's not as long as you think it is. And that's Through the Fire and Flames by Dragon Force. Okay, I've heard that one. So it's one I, I looked up while we were sitting here. It's well known for being like the final boss of Guitar Hero. Okay. So, and I think that's why it's got the reputation of being a long song. Because it is, you know, in terms of probably the actual person playing the guitar and doing the instruments, it is phenomenal. Like, the talent that it takes to do that is just unbelievable. And to do it for five minutes. I think that's the length of the song is five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, which ranges on like the the kind of the point of long, but it's right in the it's right in that middle ground of like is the song too long or is it just right? Um, but I think the complexity and just the difficulty level, of probably what it is for the person playing that song is just so unbelievable. And so especially if you're trying to do you know the guitar hero version of that song where you're clicking you know the four buttons and whatever five hundred times during that, it probably feels like it's taking two years to do. Yeah. Um, so since that one's not really like a true long song, um, I already blanked on what one of the other ones, but I, I know there's a song by Skinner. Skinner. So the people who their fam- most famous song is "Sweet Home Alabama," but they they did a song called "Tuesday's Gone." Mm-hmm. I believe that one is a really long song. Yes, I I think it is too. Um, I, I looked it up and I listened to it because I had never listened to it before, but I can't remember mm-hmm. how long it was. Um, I mean, I think it was like nine minutes, maybe. All right. Um, the first YouTube result for it has it like seven minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, really? See? Oh, this is Metallica. Why is this looking? Why is this? Is there a Tuesdays Gone by Metallica? Uh, it looks like there is a Tuesdays Gone by Metallica. <laughs> is it the same Tuesdays Gone? It might be. I don't know. There's somebody who is more of a Metallica slash Leonard Skinner fan listening to us who knows the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely let us know in the comments. <laughs> um, but but no, they yeah. are the same one. Leonard Skinner's was first because it looks like that came out in 1973. Metallica's, if it's like a cover of it, that came out in 1998. So. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. The one by Leonard Skinner is seven, is seven minutes long, so it's it's cross it's crossed our threshold, Jed. It has, and it it does look like the one by Metallica is a cover of it, from what I can tell. And 
Yeah, Metallica did cover it. So then Metallica even took it further and extended it out another minute and a half compared to what Leonard Skinner did. So. Oh my gosh, too long. <laughs> yeah, no, I bet no, there's. I'm... I bet there's a lot of Metallica fans that are like, "No, that song's perfect." You know what? That's awesome for them. I would say, and honestly, I haven't heard the Metallica version. I know the Leonard Skinner version is comes across it's rock but it's kind of like a slower rock song to me mm-hmm. so to me it's like okay this is already a bit slower and you're dragging it on for seven and a half minutes yeah not saying there aren't portions of it that i can like it's too long <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah i mean another example of leonard skinner i mean and just like I mean, Sweet Home Alabama, that one's a good one. Pretty short. I'm, I mean, that's got that's got to be maybe like the average short song, um, three minutes, three and a half. Uh, but another one is Freebird. Um, that that was the other one I was trying to figure out. I'm like, I knew there was one that was like obviously. Yeah, the nine right minutes there. long. Nine minutes. That's, Too long. That that's long. That's long. But I mean, like you've got, you've got other songs that are longer than that. Um, mm-hmm. So a couple of other ones, uh, I'm trying to remember. Like, what is? I'm of course I looked up the longest running song, and it was like some classical song that was like, you know, 15 minutes long or something like that. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what is the longest song. Uh, on my list i can't remember dang it i should have wrote down the times look at me not being prepared <laughs> um google search go- google search go- google searching right now on the fly folks we are google searching live <laughs> um uh are you a big uh, pink floyd fan yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, did not, uh. you did not sound convincing at all I mean, I don't even know if I could name one of their songs, to be honest. I would say I couldn't either, but I, you know, I looked up long songs. Name one songs. of their albums. Oh yeah, uh, well, Dark Side of the Moon, I think, is one of theirs. Oh, nice. I, I hope so. <laughs> Again, we're gonna have some classic rock fans very uh, very upset with us. Very upset with us. <laughs> um, but anyway, the reason I bring that up is because supposedly, when I looked up longest songs. Uh, shine on, shine on you, crazy diamond. Thirteen minutes long. And I've I, heard of that one. And I'm I li- tell you if I've ever listened to it. But. Well, I listened to it. I mean, but I, I didn't really because I don't like. After a while, I was like, "Is there any singing in this?" I think that was the one. I was like, "Is there any singing?" And then some people came in and sang, and then it was just music. So. I don't know. Does it count? Does it not count? I don't know. I don't know if it counts. Um, but yeah, thirteen think, minutes long. Yeah, and I think for one, those are means that for me kind of do start to get on my nerves because I look at you know some of those songs or when I listen to some, if I'm listening to that artist, unless I've specifically picked out an artist that I know is not going to sing. Actually, I want to hear lyrics. I want to hear the words. I want to hear the artist's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that song, their music is beyond that. Sometimes it is. It's just the instruments, and they're getting an opportunity to kind of show that side off without their voices in there. Yeah, That is, for me, where I start to lose interest, where I'm like, okay, now you've lost me, and I'm ready to move on. You do start singing again. And I'm kind of hoping it's not in the song and I'm not going to miss out on something because you decided to put an interlude of, you know, five minutes of instrumental between. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which I think I think the rest of these songs aren't the rest of the songs that I have uh, for examples are not like there's no musical interludes, I guess that's what mm-hmm. it's called. No, I don't know. Anyway. Musical sections of the song. Um, Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. That is uh, almost eight minutes long. Uh, of course, that... Oh, I get... No, I take that back. That one has a lot of musical interludes in it. Right? No, but I can't I can't think of its entire structure. So that one, I... I 
to tell you how much how much music without vocals is in there. I'm gonna say I listened to it. I mean, of course, I you know I've listened to it before, but I listened to it again, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of musical interlude in there. Um, another one that came up that I was really kind of surprised about, which I hadn't heard of in forever, was uh, <laughs> was a song called "Ring My Bell." Do you remember that one? I want to say I can only remember it from some Walmart commercials that played like two years ago around Christmas time. But because I had to bring that back in there again. Yeah, but like I'm trying to think. I would say I looked it up and it said it was really long, but oh yeah, I guess there's an eight minute long version of it. Mm. Do you know which one I'm talking yeah, about? Do it. The annoying one that's like, you can ring my bell. Yep. That one? Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. Could yep. you imagine nope, eight, that's the... eight minutes of that? <laughs> yeah, no, if that went on for eight minutes, I'd want to shoot myself. So another one that I was kind of interested, and I'm kind of wrapping up uh, the ideas of the songs and stuff, and I kind of want to end on one because I know you want to talk about you know, your little rant on it. But <laughs> another one that I was kind of surprised about but not was uh the um it's all coming back to me now i think celine dion um that song is like seven minutes long so uh, it's which one by celine dion um it's all coming back to me now thought you were saying that. <laughs> oh it's all coming oh, back so to me now oh, uh, celine sorry, dion it's all coming back to me now oh, i'm like what what song <laughs> you like, tell us now. you're like what are you talking about <laughs> You're like, what's the song? No, it's all coming clearly, back to me now. Yeah, clearly, we don't know. We we now realize that I don't know. Again, maybe <laughs> one that I've heard at some point. But honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. So. Ah, well, I mean, it's all coming back to me now. Um, <laughs> I was like, which yeah. one is it? The one from Titanic? <laughs> like, what are you talking about, Celine Dion? <laughs> a- Titanic was a long movie. So, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Uh, but no, there's actually two versions. I kind of like what you were talking about earlier with the uh, radio version and the, and then of course the I guess the release version, um, seven minutes long. Uh, but uh, last one that I you can go on your rant about it is uh, the oceans where my feet may fail. You know, worship music. Uh, we kind of already talked about a little bit about the hymns at the beginning, but um, yeah, yeah. Tell us your thoughts on uh, on that. I mean, this is another one I kind of have the mixed feelings on because worship music. Um, I get the point of why these songs are long. Are long. Like honestly, if you go into one of these albums, so you're talking like um, Hillsong, Elevation Worship. You know, any any of these common popular Maverick City. Um, bands that are out there red rocks worship most of the time when they're doing this they are either literally recording from a live service that they did or they are trying to imitate a live service Mm -hmm. um and so in that case when they're doing these songs they are long songs if you think about you know if you go to church going in there you'll sing a song that will go on for like six minutes seven minutes and you'll do it and you'll repeat the chorus multiple times he'll repeat the bridge multiple times so i get why they do that but then there's a lot of times that you do have these songs and they just go so much more overboard or or they will again they'll add in like that extra little bit of well they'll they'll mimic um worship leader doing like their their call to worship in the middle of things and it kind of just has the same effect so like oceans where feet may fail this was funny because when we were both at college of the ozarks and i worked at the school radio station mm-hmm. oceans where feet may fail the the cd version is a nine minute long song yeah. that was a song where if you had to go number two while you were on air that was a song that you put on because you knew you had enough time to get in and get out and get back before that song ended I know that's too much information, but that's kind of the point. But but even to go along with it, because again, like you talked about radio version, I, I looked it up. Again, album version, eight minute fifty five seconds, so it's, so a nine minute long song. Radio version, four minutes. Mm-hmm. Literally cut off more than half the song. Yeah, 
Um, and most of that, if you if you look and listen to the two versions, you're probably realizing what they're cutting off is extra bridges, you know, mm-hmm. you know, an extra chorus maybe or so, but then a lot of just that filler music that they do. Um, it, you know, it is one that again I'm going to say. If you're in a worship service, there is absolutely a purpose for it. And if that's why you're listening to this music, still that purpose for it is it's supposed to kind of give you that room um, to reflect, to feel filled with the Holy Spirit and things like that. Um, but if you're listening to it just because you like listening to music, you're probably going to fall into that scenario of like, okay, this song is too long. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's just the genre of worship music that kind mm-hmm. of hits that chord of oh we're singing this song to worship not to enjoy but, the song but i would say though like if you did have with those worship albums like you said the, probably the average song across the board is like that three and a half minute range i would say if you look specific specifically at the worship genre you're probably seeing it jump up to even closer to like five or six minutes average across the board yeah i had to venture a guess <laughs> yeah that is true I, I mean and that that makes i mean i don't know if it's just the setting that you're i mean obviously it's just the setting that you're in what you're doing that makes it that makes the refrain you know longer or you know makes them repeat i mean how many times have you you know been in church singing a song and they sing the same line, usually the last line, like ten times. Because the the uh, the music person was feeling the song. It's like you did not. You know, it's like we didn't. We didn't ask that. <laughs> oh. But but I mean, you can't say anything. Can't say anything. You know, because they were just really feeling it. Really feeling the song. So. No, and and this may be more a question of my own uh, physical well being than about the worship leader. But I mean, there's times when I'm sitting here saying, "Okay, feet are hurting now. Can we sit down now, please?" Maybe <laughs> making this go a little too long. <laughs> you gotta you gotta put your hands up and enjoy the music, Jed. <laughs> don't think about your feet. <laughs> That's what I try to tell myself. Don't feel it. Don't don't feel your feet burning. Feel feel, uh, feel the worship. Feel the worship in your feet. Dude, I, uh, I do like our worship time. I, I I will say my church does a good job with it. I yeah. appreciate it. Occasionally they go a little long, but otherwise they have a pretty good length. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's when it comes to genres, I mean, we're noticing two common uh, genres that are, you know, that usually have longer, that can, I guess that can fit that longer song in, and that's uh, classic rock and uh worship music Mm -hmm. i feel like oh yeah other than that there really isn't you know all the other genres of music don't really advocate for long songs no i mean yeah especially if you were to take out like the outliers of which are ones that are more designed to have a long length is your your classical music and then i would throw jazz in there um not that jazz is always long but they're they're meant to almost be this continuous stream of music throughout them um and so yeah i think those are two that you for the most part eliminate from the conversation of this and yeah like you said i think classical rock and and worship music are probably the two biggest vendors if we want to use that word yeah of the the song that might be too long yeah and Maybe that's just because, you know, when I know I noticed a common theme a lot in a lot of the songs that I was listening to before this, which they had like a musical interlude or guitar solo or a musical solo of some kind, which we kind of talked about as we were talking about songs. But maybe those two genres, those two avenues help with that type of thing, you know, adding long musical interludes in there. Yeah, and I think, and it's it is interesting because if you talk about those two offenders, they're arguably doing it for two different reasons. Worship music is meant to be for, I mean, they're they're meant to be for the listener. But when you have those extended periods of music, that is for worshiper to take that time to reflect, to to open up, even to use in prayer or things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
where vice versa, while it is meant for the listener's enjoyment with like classical rock, that it, you know, when you have those, that is more meant to be an artist expression and for them to you know, quote unquote, like sh- show off their mm-hmm. talent. Like, Hey, I, I can't, I, I can do more than just sing. Yeah. Let me actually let you hear the guitar. Let me actually let you hear the other instruments in here yeah. about me on top of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, last topic of discussion before we wrap it up um, is what, you know, what truly makes these songs a masterpiece or what makes them annoying in your opinion? Is it, you know, the time period? Is it, you know, the storytelling in the song? Is it the particular artist doing the song? Um, Or is it just like, is there, are you just questioning like, why is it so long? So uh, kind of like what what makes a song a masterpiece and what makes it annoying in your opinion? Um, I mean, a masterpiece will really depend on two people. The artists themselves can decide if it's their if their masterpiece or their magnum opus. Um, certainly, the audience too. And I think if it's a long song, it really is looking at you know how often is the song streamed or how often or how much did it sell. If it's one that hits like that double platinum, triple triple platinum, even if it is like a 12 minute long song, I think you got to give it the credit to be like, hey, I may not understand it, but to apparently a lot of other people, this song is a masterpiece. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess that's, that's true. You know, if, if the record, you know, label or, you know, platinum, whatever, you know, if the song is popular, then yeah, respect it. But to me, you know, a song, whether a ma- is a masterpiece or annoying, which is kind of counterproductive, honestly, my reasoning, uh, because I guess it's more of the storytelling. You know, for example, Bohemian Rhapsody. That is a longer song, not l- not long that we're talking about, but Bohemian Rhapsody is at least over five minutes long. Um, I think, and, uh, and that song, I mean, you could listen to it once and be like, man, I really want to listen to it again. Then you listen to it again, but it's the storytelling in the song. Like I said, I'm going to kind of shoot myself in the foot because American pie also has a storytelling aspect to it. (laughs) So no, that's what I was going to say. I was like, and again, differences in opinions and styles, um, Mm -hmm. I'll mention a way that I will make other people mad too, but that, that's one reason I'm okay with American Pie is because it is mostly a vocal filled song. It mm-hmm. is kind of telling a story. Really, the only repetitive thing is a chorus, and simply just the nature of a chorus. A chorus is going to be repetitive. You're usually going to hear it typically at least three times, or at worst, only two times. Um, and so that's why I can still enjoy American Pie and not get annoyed with it, even with it being a longer song. Yeah, I am one of those people who, and we we haven't mentioned a song by this artist, but it is one that I'm like, I think this artist is a very talented song writer. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand their voice at all, and that is Bob Dylan. Oh yeah. There's, it's funny because some of Bob Dylan's biggest fans, or people that I've had or known that were like fans of Bob Dylan, will even agree with me. They're like, "Yeah, his voice isn't that great." I'm like, "No, it's not. It's not that great. It is awful." <laughs> he is a phenomenal writer. I get he wanted to sing his own songs, and it's something that I don't understand because clearly he got popular without you know needing me to like him. But <laughs> to me, he's one that I'm just like, he is awful. Well, he's. De- I mean, he's one of those people that. He wasn't he he didn't become famous because of his good voice. He became mm. famous because of his unique voice. And and that is definitely fair. Unique voice combination of unique voice and his songwriting skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I don't it, this is my opinion. I'm not out here to try to convince people not to like Bob Dylan. You like him, you go for it. <laughs> If you if you throw in and say if there was a cover of American Pie by Bob Dylan, I would more than likely hate it, <laughs> and that would be solely because of the artist, not because of the length of the song or the lyrics of the song, just because of who's singing. Man, I really, you know how bad I wish my Bob Dylan impersonation was 
is, was good because I really just wanted <laughs> to sing American Pie in a Bob Dylan impersonation. People would have let you do that because it would have been royalty free. <laughs> But uh, oh, what? Oh, is a is a is a is Siri speaking to us? Yeah, Siri tried to hop into that conversation. Hey Siri, there, don't so. be jumping in. These are these are human matters. Oh crap! I just I just I just I think I just I think I just uh, unleashed all the series in the world that have listened to this because my Siri just went off when I said that. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's yeah. I I, I think you're a hundred percent right. I think. The song, I mean, obviously Leonard Skinner, you know, a master musician, you know, a master artist, a master, I mean, obviously a legend, you know, in the music community, Uh, Led Zeppelin, you know, Pink Floyd, you know, all these people that we're talking about are technically legends of music. And so they have become popular. And, you know, there's diehard Led Zeppelin fans. There's diehard Leonard Skinner fans um, that would say, oh, these songs are the epitome of, you know, songs no one can top Freebird. I mean, I how much want to bet I've, you've heard someone say that in the crowd. I mean, just saying. Oh, yeah. Um, Taking requests. Freebird! Freebird! Kick <laughs> <Take> them out! <laughs> but, uh, but I think it definitely just... Making it a masterpiece is really the artist, the way the song's written, and I mean, the, meaning the storytelling of the song. And I guess you just have to be a fan of the of the artist in general. Um, you know, who who sang yeah. American Pie? Who was that? On McLean. Oh, that's right. Um, was he the one that sang Jack and Diane or whatever? No, that was John Cougar Mellencamp. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which that is also an interesting story. Just a uh, one one last little aside here is I f- I feel so bad for John Mellencamp because that that's his real name is John Mellencamp mm-hmm. to the business and they said there's no way a guy with the last name Mellencamp is going to sell music so we're going to give you a new name Cougar so he was John Cougar for a while famous got popular was doing really well and he's like you know what I'm going to add my name in there and so then he was John Cougar Mellencamp for a while. And then he kind of said, like, screw it at the end. Like, I'm dropping Cougar. I'm John Mellencamp. I don't need that stupid last name of there. So then he went to just John Mellencamp at that point. But hmm. I wonder which of those three names. I'm certain which one of that was originally released under. But that is, John Mellencamp was the artist for Jack and Diane. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to like the song. You got to like the artist. And then you have to, I mean... You really have to appreciate the and respect the just the work that was put into the song for it to be a masterpiece. If you don't, really, when it comes down to it, you just find it annoying. And so maybe, mm. maybe that's just the answer to it. Depends on the song. It depends on the person or whether you think it's a masterpiece or not. But I would say if you are a new artist trying to break into it, Probably don't try to make your first single an eight-minute long song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely stick to three minutes. Yeah, or less. <laughs> well, or just my... get it popular on TikTok. That works, too. Yeah, you know, I was going to mention that, actually. You know, rant, ranting about the radio stuff. You know, them only playing the popular songs. I mean, TikTok is a prime example of them using older songs that were once popular but have lost his popularity now and making them repopular. So why can't radio yeah. stations do that? Oh, I mean, TikTok's done that. It's, you know, granted it's done that. It's helped make some older songs popular. It's also helped make some people who maybe weren't even really an artist. They, they might've just recorded, you know, this little attempt and it caught on, you know, one person featured it and then another person and another person, and another person. And suddenly these people, who never would have thought they could have ever had this type of outreach or, or this type of a hit song. And maybe they never will again. Mm -hmm. Still it's done that. But on the flip side, the negative side, as you go back to the radio stations, I know of radio stations that almost at this point, because TikTok is so popular, they only play the songs that are popular on TikTok. Mm -hmm. 
Which then you're still, it's funny, because then it's doing the exact the same issue thing. that you currently have with radio stations. Oh, man. What are you going to do? What? You can never win in this life. No. You, ne- you can never win listening to the radio. <laughs> Well, Plus, you, you do know the time of year that most people absolutely hate listening to radio. Christmas time. Yep. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, a song can be too long, but I guess it just comes down to the song and the artist and whether or not that song is labeled annoying or a masterpiece. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you hate really long songs or do you love them? Or maybe just respect the artist process. Let me know uh, in the comments on uh, Facebook or YouTube. But uh, thanks for being on the show, Jed. Really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. Yeah, absolutely. I have plenty of opinions and I'm always happy to find a way to sneak Christmas into a conversation at least four times. At least, at least four times. <laughs> <laughs> hey it would never be it would never be christmas without talking to you absolutely Does that makes sense <laughs> yeah sure that made sense but uh but no thank you for coming on i really appreciate it. it was a good conversation and uh thank you for listening you listeners out there shows come out every two weeks on thursday let me know your thoughts about this episode do you really like long songs or do you really not like long songs let us know um on uh, facebook or youtube thanks for listening stay safe out there and remember you don't care